All right, so uh, by now you've had a chance to uh, work with the data presented in class. We had 24 students. We had their anxiety level measured before the test, and then after they took the test, we calculated their test score. And uh, what you were able to do already is we uh, established X as being your anxiety level and Y being your math test score. Uh, we ran linear regression, and we found out the equation of the line and best fit was right here. And uh, then we went ahead and, and we uh, when put the uh, slope into context, so we had the model suggest that math test scores decrease 4.49 points per each point increase in anxiety level. So that was all great, but uh, the question is we're going to be looking at here next is, and that's what happened with these 24 students was this slope of negative 4.49, but what would it be for all students? Now, what if we had gotten a different 24 students? We would, certainly would have gotten probably a different answer, but what if we were looking at all students? So that leads us to our last hypothesis test. And what that test is called, is, is, we'll get to that in a second here, but it's called a regression slope t-test, where we're looking at the slope here. So the question is, is there evidence of an association between anxiety level and math test scores? So, with that in mind, we're going to have our hypotheses like normal, and we have our null hypothesis would be that, there, you know what, there is no relationship between the two variables. Anxiety and test score have nothing to do with each other. And the alternate would be, yes, you know what, there is a relationship. So how we're going to get at this relationship is we're going to look at the actual slope here. And in this case, we, all, we knew the slope. We went ahead and we defined that as B sub 1. That's what we do in stats. Well, what if we're looking at the slope for all students? We wouldn't use lowercase b. What we're going to do is we're actually going to use a different letter for that, and it's beta. So what we'd say is beta 1. That would be the slope for all. Same thing over here, beta sub 1. And here's the deal. If there really is no relationship between these two variables here, what should happen is that slope for all students should be zero or pretty darn close. So in other words, it would be basically a straight line going across the data or across the, uh, the scatter plot. If there is a relationship, either we would see a positive slope or a negative slope of some kind that's, that's far away enough from zero. So we'd say not equal to zero. So that's what we're going to be looking at here is we're going to be looking at our slope and we're going to be actually setting up some parameters for that. So with that in mind here, we have our hypotheses here, and they have to do with slope. Now, we're going to go and check conditions like we always do. So how that will work is there's actually four conditions whatsoever. The first one is called a rep is this the representative sample of students. Well, of course, I mean, those 24 students that were chosen, we have no reason to believe they're any, they're any different from anyone else, so that works. The second one is if you actually made a scatter plot of the data, and we did that earlier, the scatter plot looks something like this. So does it look fairly linear? So in other words, if you were to go ahead right now and just draw on a line like this, you'd say, you know what, it looks fairly linear. Yeah, there's a couple points out of the way here, maybe a little outlier down here, but, but by and large, it looks all right. Also, you're going to look at the residuals. So if you actually do the residuals, L1 versus the residuals here, anxiety versus residuals, you get a graph like this. Shows no obvious pattern here, so that's going to be our third condition. And then our fourth one is we've looked at histograms in the past, and this time it's going to be the histogram of our residuals. So when you make a histogram, make sure the residuals are what we're going to be graphing here, and this is what the graph should look like on your calculator if you do it correctly here. Is it approximately normal? Well, well yeah, it's a, it's a little bit skewed to the left here, but, but that'll work. So what this is called is called a regression slope t-test, or on your calculator, they will call it a linear regression t-test. And basically, you know, they mean the same thing here. We're looking at linear regression, or in this case, we're really looking at slope to determine if there's a relationship between anxiety and test score. So this is how you're actually going to do such a thing here. Go ahead, grab your calculator here. I'm going to go and clear that out. And what I'd like you to do now is, let's go to the next screen here. We're going to actually perform the mechanics here. So your data should be in your calculator. So you can see my data is on the calculator right here. And how you actually run the test is you do stat, go over to tests, and then go up, which is really down. And then I want you to find the one that says Linreg t-test. Press enter. From there, it's going to be L1 and L2, because that's where we put the data. Frequency, leave it as 1. Our alternate hypothesis should be not equal to 0. Go down to the very bottom here, and just go ahead and press Calculate. And when you do that, all these things are going to come spewing out of the calculator. So for instance, we now know T. T is, let me go back to that there, T is negative 2.893. 
We also know, going back here, we know uh, P, and we know degrees of freedom, so P is 0 0.0084. We also know degrees of freedom is 22. Now, why is that? It comes from this. It comes from N minus 2. Well, how many students did we have? We had 24, and uh, 24 minus 2 would be 22. So these are all things that will come out of the calculator for us here. And, and there's other things, too. Um, if we went back to those, we would have we'd have A, if we go down here a little bit further here, B. So that's our, our y-intercept and our slope. That all gets calculated for us. S, S is the standard deviation of the original, so that's 18.69. So I'm going to write S equals 18.69. And uh, what else do we have over here? We should have, let's see here, R and R squared. So R squared is 0.276. And the last thing we're going to be is R. So R is negative 0.524. Uh, we also know what x and y is because we've defined that earlier. So this is all information that comes to us from the calculator. And really at this point, we're done. There's no other work to show here. We're fine and dandy here. So that, that is that. So we have our p-value. It's 0 .0084. And uh, from here, we just do the conclusion. So if our p-value is this low, we'd say we reject HO since p is less than 5%. And then we would say there is strong evidence then what you would do is you would say that the alternate hypothesis is true so you say there's strong evidence of a relationship between anxiety and math test score and that's it between anxiety and your test score so that is the process here. We're really looking at slope here, and that, that slope's going to help us determine everything here. Um, once again, here we go. We don't need to draw a sketch, any of the other stuff here. P putting out the values that come out from your calculator is good enough, and that is that.